Thank you. Please be seated. The secretary will read the order. Debate on vote number four, Corporate Governance and Traditional Affairs Appropriation Bill. Thank you, the Honorable, the Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs. Thank you very much, House uh, Chairperson, colleagues, ministers, and deputy ministers, honorable members, MECs, mayors and executive mayors, representative of South African Local Government Association, deputy chairperson of the National House of Traditional Leaders, traditional and re religious leaders, the deputy chairperson of the CRL Commission, representatives of Contra Lesa, the business sector, fellow South Africans, ladies and gentlemen, Dumelang. Honorable Speaker, Honorable House Chairperson, we are meeting today at a time when we are experiencing a wave of attacks and abuse leveled against women and children. We condemn these barbaric acts with the strongest terms possible as they do not have place in our peace-loving society. We convey our heartfelt condolences to families who lost their loved ones as a result of these incidents. It is my honor to present to you the budget vote of the Ministry of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs. In his now famous classic, Native Life in South Africa, its author and journalist, founder member and first Secretary General of the South African Native National Congress, Sol Plachi wrote, I quote, awaking on Friday morning, June 20th, 1913, the South African Native found himself not actually a slave, but a pariah in the land of his birth. And 101 years after this book was published, we are still crippling with the effects of the Land Act and its various manifestations over the years. While we have achieved political emancipation, too many of our citizens find themselves to be par pariahs in the land of their birth. Changing this reality has been the focus of this democratic government since its inception in 1994. Transforming the local government sector has been a key element of this. Last month, we convened the third presidential local government summit under the capable leadership of His Excellency President Jacob Zuma. We believe its theme of transforming municipal spaces for radical social economic development not only addresses these legacies from the colonial apartheid eras, but also encapsulates our vision for the local government sector for the next five years. Let me take this opportunity to congratulate the president of the South African Local Government Association, Councillor Park Stawi, on his election as the president of the United Cities and Local Government Association. Councillor Tawu has also been appointed to the United Nations High Level Independent Panel to oversee the effectiveness of the UN Habitat, a program that promotes socially and environmentally sustainable towns and cities. This is what we mean when we say ANC lives, ANC leads. We are currently engaged in the Department of International Relations and Cooperation to ensure that our beloved country takes advantage of these strategic international assignments. Honorable members, we met last year on the cusp of the fourth full democratic local government elections. The political climate was volatile in some voting districts and the elections hotly contested. I'm glad to report to you that the elections were deemed free and fair. This was largely due to the work elections that was convened under COCTA leadership. We thank all stakeholders who participated 
in this process. In a bid to break with our apartheid past and to show that we are a caring government, we have also ensured that payment of, of, of a once-off gratuity to non-retaining councillors is, is realized. To date, I can report that approximately 5,000 councillors were paid a total amount of almost uh, 260 million. Ernest and Young study, which was commissioned by the Remuneration Commission of Public Office Bearers, established that councillors are the last paid public office bearers among the three spheres. Hence, as COCTA, we welcome the review of public office bearers remuneration, which is currently taking place, and we hope that it will deal with all remuneration-related challenges of public office bearers in local government. Honorable House Chair, essentially transforming uh, the municipal space and, and setting the foundation for radical economic and social development has been the, base, the back to basics program. In the past financial year, we committed to continue with our second phase of the back to basic program, in line with our belief that local government should be in the hands of our citizens. One of the key elements of the back to basic 10 point plan is there is a one of fostering more positive community experiences. During last year's budget vote speech, we promised to create more participation platforms. At the end of March this year, 40 dysfunctional municipalities were supported in creating effective community engagement mechanisms. A total of uh, 4,067 work committees have been established. Also, as promised last year, a national induction campaign for work committee member members is in the process of being implemented. Our experience over the past years has taught us that community involvement is essential to the success of our programs. We are also developing what based service delivery dashboards and implementing what improvement plans. It's in our thinking that this will ensure that basic services such as the cutting of grass, working street lights and the fixing of water leaks becomes a cornerstone of our municipalities. To further improve the state of our municipal finances, a, gener a generic revenue plan was developed and implemented in 30 municipalities. Implementation entails the review and update of municipal financial policies, assistance to recover outstanding, uh, outstanding government debt and data cleansing. Municipalities were introduced to new and cost-effective technologies of providing services. Honorable members, in 2016, we attended the Habitat 3 conference, which unanimously adopted the new urban agenda. That is the Quito Declaration on Sustainable Cities and Human Settlements for All. Also formally adopted by the United Nations were the new post-2015 Sustainable Development Goals, which recognizes the importance of the role of cities during this century with uh, SDG 11, which seeks to make cities inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. The adoption of the Integrated Urban Development Framework last year as our national urban policy signifies how South Africa is now highly well positioned to respond to both national urbanization challenges, to interface with global dialogues and agreements, but also to be a thought leader in international dialogues on urbanization and urban policy development. As chair, traditional leaders form an integral part of our democracy. In a bid to further democratize our municipal spaces, we have pushed for greater involvement of traditional leaders in municipal councils. For the first time following the 2016 local government elections, traditional leaders attended the integrated council induction program that was hosted by SALGA. Our efforts to ensure a zero tolerance towards the deaths of initiates are beginning to bear fruit. While the number of initiate deaths was greatly reduced from the previous year, that is never good enough. Our condolences go out to the families who lost the loved ones during the in initiation phase. We commend the work done by CRL Commission in probing further this initiation practice. They are findings that we hope will be used to enhance and strengthen 
our collective efforts to have a debt-free initiation practice, to address most of the policy and legislative gaps and challenges within the, the traditional affairs sector, COCTA Ministry will focus on strengthening the current legislation. The Ministry has prioritized supporting the parliamentary processes towards the enactment of the traditional and Khoisan leadership bill. The bill will address, among others, the recognition of Khoisan communities and leaders. It will also support the participation of traditional leaders in municipal councils. We also intend finalizing and tabling the customary initiation bill to parliament to regulate the cultural initiation practice. We believe this will go a long way to reducing the number of fatalities emanating from the practice. Deputy Minister Mapela will provide further details on this subject. Whilst we meet in the midst of the African Month celebrations, we continue to recreate our municipal space by ensuring that this is indeed an African democracy through the enhanced role of traditional leaders. To this end, COCTA Ministry in partnership with the National House of Traditional Leaders is organizing an endeavor of traditional leaders to discuss and address most of the challenges facing traditional affairs. The endeavor will take place from the 28th of May to the 1st of June this year. Ladies and gentlemen, the community work program is a flagship program of this department. The reimagining municipal space cannot happen without the involvement of the poorest of the poor. The number of municipalities that have CWP programs has increased from 198 to 229 in the last year. Out of an annual target of 234,823, we were able to provide 243,162 work opportunities as at the 31st of March 2017. We also conducted training for 23,483 participants during the same period. As chair, we have engaged with our CWP beneficiaries. We recently visited uh, Mbombela as well as uh, Maluti Apofo. They have thanked the government for this intervention and call on us to improve this, ensuring that training provided to them is accredited and relevant to the demand of the labor market. They have requested professional business enterprise support. They want to run their own businesses. They don't want to be perpetual dependent on this program. They want to exit this program so as to create space for other less fortunate citizens. We are currently working with National Treasury to develop a new CWP model, which is intended to address identified uh, gaps. Chairperson of the House, we want a transformed municipal space to become a reality for all our citizens. To that end, we have identified the misalignment between bulk and reticulation infrastructure as one of the major causes of delay in the delivery of basic services. Working through the Municipal Infrastructure Support Agent in collaboration with our partners, the Development Bank of Southern Africa and the Department of Water and Sanitation, we have developed an implementation plan for seven municipalities. The plan will include the rollout of reticulation infrastru infrastructure in the Ugu, Herikwala, Sikukuni, and Mopani district municipalities. The Alfred Nzo district municipality will focus on the, on, on the Mbizana Dam. Our Tambo district municipality and the Madibe local municipality will also be included. The municipal infrastructure grant plays a vital role in changing the face of municipalities so that citizens experience firsthand the work of local government. At the end of March 2017, 65% of the total MIG allocation of 14.9 billion was spent. Municipalities in Pumalanga province are performing the best at this, po at this point as they have spent 72.4% followed by KwaZulu Natal that have spent 69.4% of the total allocation of 3.8 billion. In the 2015-16 in the financial year, which ended in June 2016, 131 households benefited from the provision of water infrastructure. A total of 
134, 327 households benefited from the provision of sanitation infrastructure. The MIG annual allo allocation of the 20, 2017 medium term expenditure framework includes an amount of 900 million, which is allocated outside of the grant formula and earmarked for the specific sports infrastructure projects identified by Sports and Recreation South Africa. In addition to the above, municipalities are required to spend 4.5% on sports and recreation infrastructure identified in their own integrated development plans. In addition to this, 2.3 billion is for municipal infrastructure that supports social institutions and micro enterprises. To accelerate the spending level of struggling municipality, Honorable Chairperson, COCTA has planned to strengthen its capacity to support municipalities to improve spending by, among others, develop its finance unit capacity to handle MIG conversions for municipalities that fail to spend MIG allocation, and also by transferring the MIG program from the DCOC to our unit of MISA. The objective of this transfer, House Chair, is to foster synergy, but also to make sure that there is proper working relationship between projects monitoring and technical support functions. An interministerial committee on service delivery announced in last year's budget vote has been playing coordinating role with a view to unlock obstacles, hampering consistent provision of basic services at the right quality and standard. A project management office has been established with the role of facilitating the collaborative implementation of intergovernment initiate, in, initiatives aimed at reducing backlog in these 2027 20, uh, district municipalities. One of the flagship uh, programs being driven by uh, a MISA PMO office is the regional management support contracts that was started in the last financial year. On our chairperson, during the past financial year, the department strengthened measures to monitor the appointment of senior managers to enforce compliance with minimum prescribed competency as part of our effort to ensure that uh, competent people are appointed. The department intends promulgating the regulations applicable to all staff members below management excellence during the 2017-28 financial year. The department is gravely concerned about the excessive growth of debt owed to municipality, which is currently standing at, at uh, 117 billion. The culture of non-payment in our society is becoming pandemic. National departments are also owing municipalities 2.3 billion, while provincial departments are owing municipalities 3.1 billion. This culture of non-payment has also, ex also extended to municipalities themselves, as certain municipalities have become persistent defaulters of their creditors. As chairperson, I must indicate that uh, for this year, budget allocation, the department amount is, is equated to 78.404 billion, and uh, for 2017-2018 is, is 85.1 billion, and for 2018-2019 is 91 billion, reflecting an average growth of 8% over the 2017 medium term uh, 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 period. The total allocation of uh, 78.4 billion in the 2017-2018 in the financial year is divided as follows. Department of Cooperative Governance will receive 78.2 billion. Transfers and subsidies of this 78 will amount to 73.9 billion. And operational costs, which will uh, amount to 558 million and special allocations will amount to 3.7 billion, and the Department of Traditional Affairs will be allocated 145 million. House Chairperson, we believe that today, we have outlined our programs and plans that will further enhance the economic transformation agenda of South Africa, so that all South Africans can enjoy prosperity. My heartfelt gratitude goes to my colleagues, both Deputy Minister Nell and Babela, for their hard work and diligence over the past year. We will not have achieved as much without their sterling contribution. My thanks also go to, to the various director generals, including the current DG, 
Professor Charles Noila, who is serving both departments. Also, my gratitude goes to the staff of the ministries and the department. I thank you for your effort over the past year. It has been my pleasure to serve with you. Thanks. Thanks also to all hardworking MECs and councillors. And finally, a word of thanks to my family who have remained my anchor and a blessing. Man, House Chairperson, I have the honor to submit vote for for your approval. I thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Um, the following speakers, then you should just watch the clock on your left so that you don't get surprises. The Honorable E.M. Tetra. Honorable Chairperson, Minister, Deputy Minister, and Honorable Members. The ANC believes that it that the local government should be the basis for the democratic, integrated, and prosperous, and truly non-racial in society, and should be play a critical role in building the local government and the environment. We have moved from the higher Central Africa in urban areas and, and the homelands. Indian and colored communities were compromised by the fragmented local government system that favors in terms of the resources, not favors in terms of the resources and local authorities, structures mainly to serve the white communities. The system fundamentally were damaged and the special social and uh, social and white communities, economical environment in which people lived, worked, and raised their families. The African National Congress has over the years fundamentally changed this by establishment, by the establishment coherent and functioning and stable structures in the system of local government. This has largely in the initiation stage been informed and guided by the vision of the local government as set out in the historical 1992 policy guideline document, which is called Ready to Govern, which called the strong and which called for a strong and an effective local firstly ensure Chair, that it plays a crucial role in building democracy in the future of South Africa. Among others, it's played the key role in development and in the equitable redistribution and relocation of local authority services. The development local government remains the visionary fundament, uh, uh, foundation for the continuing and reconciliation and development of our country. Hence, the ANC considers the local government as the fears of government that is closest to the people. Chairperson, the local government white paper visualizes the local government as a key component of the developmental state. It pursues of these basic services and social services and civic and political rights include participatory governance and have been progressively extended to the more citizen than ever before. The Portfolio Committee report has noted that the 2017 stroke 2018 budget for the Department of Corporate Governance, Traditional Affairs, echo the social economic transformation agenda of the African National Congress as outlined in the NDP. And the, the forecast term medium-term strategic focus of 2014-2019. The department continue to focus on the implementation of the, of the back to basis program over the medium-term budget, and is informed by the outcome nine points of the MTSF, responsive and accountability and effective and efficient local government. The democratic local government in our country is turning 17 years this year, Chair. And through this, <clears throat> through the ANC-led government, significant strides have been made to improve lives of our people according to, according to our 2016 local government election manifesto. Among other, uh, among other issues that have been achieved, Chair, as the Minister has alluded to it, is the issue of the electricity that has been increased, the two million indigenous household the water and infrastructures that has rose up, 
basic water and services, increase to basic and sanitation services, and many more chairs. Almost 3.7 um, 3, 3 million subsidies housing, that is opportunity with, um, we've already built. They, they, about, they give a home to about 12.5 million South African as we speak today. What this says, Chair, is that the local government has been successfully in charging, in changing the lives of our citizens for the better. Chairperson, we know there are a number of challenges. The, chair, the minister have already talked about the job creation, that the job creation is at the center of the African National Congress. Transformation agenda in creating better life for the poor. The department plans to provide an income safety net for the poor, <coughs> for the poor people by providing this estimate of 744, 369 work opportunity over the medium term through the 11.5 billion budget for the con uh, for the con community work program. We acknowledge the challenges, Chair, that are there. But however, we have requested that the department has to ensure that they improve in this program. The challenge of the, the other challenges that we are facing is the challenge of the initiations and in religious institutions in the country. Remains a very major concern for the African National Congress. We therefore age for the speedy implementation of the amendment to the Municipality Structure Act of 117 of 1998 and the Municipality System Act of 32 of the 2000, which are critical to effective and meaningful participation of traditional leadership structures in local government structures. We also call for the amendment to the, to the traditional leadership initiation bill and the introduction of the customary initiation bill in order to regulate the cultural initiation practice so as to reduce the number of deaths emanated from this practice as the minister has already talked to it. I know Minister Papela will get into detail. As, as the ANC, we are satisfied with the department achievement in this implementation of the back to basis. The 78 billion budget allocation of 2017-2018 is welcome and it is great towards, is geared towards the implementation of the B2B intervention in areas of service delivered. Municipality infrastructure development, job creation, and local economical development. We shall continue with, with our journey towards a better life for all by working together with the community and putting the people first. The ANC chairperson supports this budget vote. I thank you. Thank you very much. The Honorable Milam. Yeah. Chairperson, I note that the minister didn't thank the Guptas. He'd better watch out. He might not have a job next week. <laughs> it's rather astounding. It's rather astounding that three years after the Back to Basics program was announced, no assessment has been done to determine whether the situation in municipalities has improved. Now, lest we forget, at its launch, then Minister Praveen Gordon noted that roughly a third of municipalities were dysfunctional, a further third were at risk, and the final third were performing well. The last time any assessment was done, which was in February 2015, 29% of municipalities were considered dysfunctional, 31% at risk, and 40% performing well. This begs the question, just what has COGTA been doing for the past three years? There's been no significant improvement and no assessment to determine whether things are getting better or worse. According to a presentation just this week from the Department of Cooperative Governance to the Portfolio Committee, 86 municipalities are not viable. And some 205 municipalities rely on grants from the national fiscus for more than 75% of their revenue according to the Section 71 reports they submit quarterly to the National Treasury. This is indicative of a system of local government in disarray. Unless municipalities can generate their own revenue, they face financial failure. Coupled with excessive and rapidly growing salary bills, 
It should be no surprise that many municipalities are unable or unwilling to comply with National Treasury guidelines regarding the minimum amount to be allocated to the maintenance and renewal of infrastructure. And on this latter issue, it is abundantly clear that the medium-term strategic framework is not going to achieve its objectives in relation to municipal bulk infrastructure. Again, information provided by the department just this week shows that with 60% of the time frame of the MTSF expended, only 12% of the targeted 2.3 million households have been given access to water through this program, and only 17% of the targeted 2.5 million households have been given access to sanitation. And that's on just two indicators. Salary increases that outstrip inflation in all spheres of government are making the provision of services unaffordable. Now, it's interesting to note that in the DA-governed Western Cape, salaries comprise just 53.2% of the total provincial budget, according to the latest provincial budget and expenditure report. And this is the lowest percentage of all the Order. provinces by a clear margin. Order, honorable members. And the, same is, Proceed. and the same is true in DA-governed municipalities, because where we govern, there are no jobs for pals. We welcome the progress municipalities and national treasury are making in implementing a standard chart of accounts at municipal level. We are, however, concerned that a number of municipalities are not going to be ready to roll out the MSCOA system on 1 July as required by national treasury. And the reduction in the Municipal Systems Improvement Grant will have a significant impact on municipalities' ability to implement this system and may result in further financial instability in our municipalities. Now, during the 2016 State of the Nation Address, Madam, it was emphasized that excessive and wasteful expenditure must be reduced and that action must be taken to manage unnecessary expenditure. MFMA Circular 82 highlighted the following areas of cost containment that should be implemented at local government level, including the curtailment of overseas trips, the, required, uh, the requirement of a detailed motivation for all travel, whether local or international, the discouragement of business class flights, restrictions on the employment of consultants, including the requirement that a gap analysis be conducted to determine the need for those consultants, and restrictions on the fees that they charge to equal or less than industry standards. Regulations guiding the use of accommodation when traveling. Encouragement of the use of municipal facilities for meetings rather than off-site workshops in Darbas, etc. A complete prohibition on the issuing of municipal credit cards and a curb on spending on conferences, catering, entertainment and social functions. And while we welcome this initiative from former COGTA and Finance Minister Godan, it is sadly mostly ignored, as was evidenced in Amgeni municipality recently, who decided to hold a strategic workshop at the luxury Edward Hotel in Durban. Interestingly, the entire ANC caucus booked in for an extra night the evening before the conference to discuss other business at ratepayer expense. Or as was revealed today, the Mfuleni mayor who spent 1.7 million rand of municipal funds on luxury hotels, fast food and fuel for his private vehicle, despite having a mayoral vehicle. The bottom line, and one that is repeated often by the Auditor General, is that there is zero accountability and a complete lack of consequence management. But why should we be surprised? The ANC of 2017 has learned well from number one and his able lieutenants, including Minister Des Van Royen. We note with extreme concern that political battles continue to play out at a local government level. The dissolution of Mutu municipality is one example of how the ANC puts its faction fights ahead of the people of South Africa, but other examples abound. The political hypocrisy evidenced by the ANC in acceding to the AIC's demand for Matatiel to be reincorporated in KZN simply so that they can hold on to power in Ekuruleni is breathtaking. And then we have Gauteng MEC Paul Mashatile, who has indicated he wants to withdraw all municipal powers and functions from the DA-governed Mokhale City Municipality and vest them in the ANC-controlled West Rand District Municipality not because Mokhali is, uh, is failing to deliver, but because it puts the ANC back in charge of the district's biggest cash cow. 
Now, Chairperson, last year I was called to order in this house for calling the minister a two-minute noodle. This year, I've been racking my brain to figure out what you call a minister who has accomplished absolutely nothing, who is more absent than present, but who shows up at any Jay-Z 783 event and pretends to have military veteran credentials. Maybe that's why we see him in camo gear so often. He's hiding from his many failures. So I'm not going to call him anything. I am, however, going to challenge him. I challenge him to present a report on the effects of amalgamating municipalities prior to the 2016 local government elections. Thank you. I challenge him to show leadership on the Makali City and Buwani matters. And I challenge him to ensure the municipal officials and public representatives oh, are held responsible for all misconduct. Thank you. The Honorable Jalisa. Ngozi Slav. Isizwe siyanqakama sifuna inkonzo nebhizi nikhaphe ikari neGuptas nizinhlonu. The EFF rejects the budget vote for of the Department of Co Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs. The local government's fear is synonymous with resource wastage, incompetence and corruption. Local government is the focus of much of the often violent anti-government protest action that has become a, such a feature of South Africa 20 years into its democracy. The 73 billion allocated to this department is not sufficient to carry out the necessary development needed, and most of it will be channeled to Gupta's, to Gupta Ventures by Mr. Van Royen. But what is wrong with the local government's fear of government, member, and why has what? the government failed to provide solution to these seemingly perennial problems? This first problem is the structure of local government itself, which constrains th these fears from performing development functions that, that it should be performing. Local authorities have important powers to deliver water services, for example, but not influence at all over critical policy areas such as labor or education policy. In many respects, a system of centralized, top-down local government has been continued out of the apartheid era into today. This leaves citizens with very little really influence on priorities of their local government. That is why citizens get frustrated and end up leading often violent protests, because they do not know what their local government is doing. Secondly, and we have raised this matter regularly, the percentage of the equitable share budget that goes Point to the to local order. government sphere is ridiculous. Honorable Talis. Chairperson, thank you very much. I'd like to address you in terms of Rule 65 and 66, please, if I may. We had, to, we had to listen to each other and debate. Yeah. It's very, well, you see, they're proving my point. They're proving my point. Order, order, honorable members. Carry on, you're proving it. Order, honorable members. Order. Order, honorable members. You see, honorable Dirks is order. so sore from the election no. whipping he got in Maritzburg that he's no. still can come here and chunk. No, Honourable Chairperson, just, just to say to you that, to the class. that we, um, what we need to do is to be able to hear the speaker at the podium. It's very difficult to hear the speaker when you've got the shouting and screaming taking place from the benches there. Okay. And I would ask him, we'd like to hear what the member right. says, just like we want to hear what the ANC have to say today. No, th thank you very much. Um, Honourable members, we are allowed to heckle, but we must not drown the speaker on the podium. Allow the speaker to be heard. And um, all of you, you'll have your speakers to come and respond on the issues. Honorable Talis, can you proceed? Thank you, Chair. And we have raised this matter regularly. The percentage of the equitable share budget that goes to the local government sphere is ridiculous, minuscule, relative to the amount and importance of work that municipalities have to do. Linked to this, we must seriously start thinking beyond slogans about the desirability of keeping provinces as they are interrogate the functions they play and critically reflect if these are not an unnecessary sponge on our national revenue. Thirdly, is the problem of corruption 
and how this get condoned and promoted by the ANC. The very presence of Mr. Van Royen here as minister is evidence of corruption. He is one of many in the ANC who have sold out their souls for a plate of curry, and he is never to be taken serious in the first in the fight against Order. corruption and maladministration at a local government level. It is mind-boggling that the ANC has been so unashamed in publicly showing off their willingness to short-circuit government process for narrow and short political gains. Why is it easy for the ANC to make unintelligible deals with the ANC, I, I, AIC to move Matatiele to KwaZulu Natal and KwaZulu Natal from the Eastern Cape? Why, while they have been dragging their feet in Limpombo in resolving the Malum, Malalumilele issue. Mr. Van Royen is prepared to manipulate the decommission, the decommission board processes in order to le leverage short-term gains and continue looting the municipalities they lead through collisions with smaller parties. Lastly, government must not use traditional leaders as they do in some areas to push through illegal mine deals against wishes of the people. There must be a creative way of working with traditional leaders in a way that catalyzes development in rural areas. Traditional leaders must refuse to be used as pawns by the ANC. The, the EFF wants municipalities that are developmental in nature. Municipalities must be able to inter integrate and coordinate functions to lead infrastructure development and deliver service services to our people. Kokta does not have this capacity under this Gupta minister, and we have, we reject the budget vote. Thank you. Thank you. Um, honorable members. Honorable members. Order. Order honorable members from both sides. Order, on, honorable members, honorable members, as you know that you are allowed to heckle, but you should not drown the speaker on the podium. What you do on one speaker, it may be done to your speaker. Please, let's try and reduce, let's try and reduce, let's try and reduce the levels of the heckling so that the speaker can, we can still hear what is being communicated. Thank you very much. The Honorable Kebekulu. Slavathon Pegleyo, Abathon Shobonge Enlini, Nese Chame. Sitanga Naglilu Izwe, Nese, Nese Shwe Nung Nubezo, Kubula Awe Engana Nabisfazan. Umvel Nanga Aza Kumbule Izwe Leit, Nukulumeni Wendando Eni. Slavathon. So, Ebe Ogus <laughs> Abantu abafika kuno course izwe liphethwe kahle lihlonishwa kodwa namhlanje nase kuthiwa abuyele eqileni inhlaka zo course eh chairperson eh uh, i would like to point out a few things we, we, on, on this debate the department has a, a clear mandate uh, stated and it should be implementing and applying fail as local government in particular in failing to carry out its service delivery service development and delivery functions effectively. As a result, we are seeing service delivery protests all over the country, and these are slowly escalating into protests uh, 
in, in, in terms of both violence and damage to property. This situation must be brought under control and the only manner in which that will occur is through actual de de delivery of services, Honorable Minister. This department appears to be oblivious to what it, uh, current is, is currently transpiring in local government. Why is there no monitoring? The recent construction of low-cost houses in, in, of interior quality in both structure and size is just one example of such failure. The poor beneficiaries are expected uh, to just uh, uh, be grateful that they are receiving them. These people have no recourse as the contractors who are often fly-by-night op operators and who make huge profits leave structures that are falling apart with cracked uh, walls and leaking roofs. The only people who seem to benefit in this entire transaction are contractors and the people who are possibly receiving backhanders from them for ensuring tender awards. Disbursements by the department in respect of infrastructure grant to local municipalities are not monitored and there is no oversight uh, uh, to ensure that these funds are utilized for the, their intended purposes. Companies, uh, con contract companies co contracted to lay pipes for potable water for uh, most rural communities have been left with pipes that are buried ankle deep in the ground. In some areas, even left lying on top of the ground. Needless to say, these municipalities remain without water. The back to basics strategy, which should have by now been an answer to the urban migration challenge from rural communities who are flocking to big cities and towns in the hope of finding employment is not yet yielding expected results. Thank you. This Time has expired. Uh, the Honorable Kubisa. Uh, Chairperson, Honorable Members, we believe that the Department could do more to accommodate traditional leaders in both political and social governance in our country. The NFP policy position on traditional leadership is very clear. We believe that governance at local government level would be greatly enhanced by actively encouraging the input of traditional In addition to local governance, we're of the opinion that the departments should coordinate with other state departments to integrate the contribution of traditional leaders in diverse aspects of social life, such as combating crime, provision of health care, and empowering our rural communities. Department Chairperson, the Department of Corporate Governance, Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs is at the cold face of service de delivery in South Africa. And when we witness the spate of violent service delivery protests flaring up in municipalities daily all over the country, it is to COCTA that we should turn to answers. The National Freedom Party is of the opinion that COCTA has a lot to answer for. It must pull up its socks and become proactive in executing its mandate to ensure effective service delivery to our people and prevent service delivery protests from flaring up again. To this effect, we believe that the department must take heed of our people who are crying for basic service delivery such as clean water, sanitation, homes, roads, and electricity. And we understand that the local people are saying, create a climate that is conducive to service delivery. Employ us at the, at, at the local level. The budget for COCTA is 78 billion for the, this year, financial year, which is a normal increase of 1% on the previous year. And the National Freedom Party notes with approval the increased spending in the community work program. This program is good, Chairperson, but it is politicized. And we want to let us ensure that uh, 
those people who have been there in this program for a long time are given the necessary courses that are credited so that they are able to graduate from this program. The National Freedom Party is also concerned by the huge amounts that the struggling municipalities owe to ESCOM, and they must be assisted. And we believe that SALCA can assist these municipalities negotiate so that they are able to pay their bills. And those departments, again, that own municipalities should work with Treasury so that these municipalities are paid and they are able uh, to effect the services that they could give to the people. Another concern, Chairperson, is the rampant corruption which is prevalent in local municipalities, and particularly so in involving municipality councillors and officials. Such corruption is retarding social de uh, service delivery and taints the ability of our municipalities to govern in a transparent and accountable manner as required by our constitution. Your the department is urged to intensify its efforts to curb this form of corruption and also eliminate cutter deployment, is which is expired. affecting our municipality. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. The Honorable the Deputy Minister for Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, responsible for provincial and local affairs, Umnum Zanel. Chairperson, Thank you very, very much. Honorable members, ministers and deputy ministers, I associate myself fully with the protocol observed by Minister van der Rooyen. Everything that happens in our country ultimately happens in a municipality, from a school to a power station, from a factory to a military base, from a sanitation plant to a square kilometer array the powerful radio telescope being constructed to look into space and back in time from a local municipality in the Karoo. We're reminded of the proverb, for want of a nail, which says, for want of a nail, the shoe was lost. For want of a shoe, the horse was lost. For want of a horse, the rider was lost. For want of a rider, the message was lost. For want of a message, the battle was lost. For want of a battle, the kingdom was lost. All for the want of a horseshoe nail. Local government is that horseshoe nail that we must never ever lose, lest we bat lose the battle against poverty, unemployment and inequality, and ultimately our republic. The proverb also illustrates the fact that local government is a complex system, often in a state of disequilibrium, in which relatively small changes can have large and often unintended and unforeseen consequences. The reality that everything ultimately happens in a municipality also applies to the fact that South Africa is urbanizing very rapidly. According to the UN, 80% of the world's population lives in urban areas. By 2050, this will increase to 66%. Bear in mind that in 1950, only three in 10 people lived in urban areas. Continuing population growth and urbanization will add two and a half billion people to the world's population, urban population by 2050. 90% of this increase will be in Asia and in Africa. In fact, a Africa is expected to be the fastest urbanizing region between 2020 and 2050. 63% of South Africans already live in urban areas. This will rise to 71% by 2030, and by 2050, eight out of every 10 South Africans will live in urban areas. We need to guide that growth and management of urban areas in ways that unleash the potential of our cities and towns and at the same time reverse the terrible legacy of apartheid spatial injustice. Our rural areas and our urban areas are inextricably linked. Many rural areas are undergoing the same rapid densification that urban areas are undergoing. In the words of Mike Davis, not only is the peasant coming to the city, but the city is coming to the peasant. Our national development plan says that by 2030, South Africa should observe meaningful and measurable progress in reviving rural areas and in creating more functionally integrated, balanced, and vibrant urban settlements. 
The National Development Plan says that for this to happen, the country must do three things. One, we must clarify and relentlessly pursue a national vision for spatial development. Secondly, we must sharpen the instruments for achieving this vision. And thirdly, we must build the required capabilities both in the state and among citizens. South Africa's Integrated Urban Development Framework, or the IUDF, was adopted by Cabinet in April of 2016. The IUDF is central to our goal of transforming municipal spaces for radical economic and social transformation. The IUDF aims to guide the development of inclusive, resilient, and livable urban settlements while directly addressing the unique conditions and challenges facing South Africa's cities and towns. Importantly, the IUDF recognizes that the country has different types of cities and towns, each with different roles and requirements. The IUDF principles and priorities should inform and guide long-term development plans and policies, strategic infrastructure investments, regulatory and fiscal instruments, spatial targeting, as well as sector policy documents and related legislative frameworks. All this requires promoting both bottom-up and top-down partnerships that are governed by principles of co-ownership rather than hierarchy and compliance. The following steps have been taken to implement the IUDF since its adoption last year. The 2016 Salga National Members Assembly, as well as the third Presidential Local Government Summit in 2017, resolved to support the implementation of the IUDF. The President's Coordinating Council resolved that provinces must implement the IUDF in selected sites in each province. The Presidential Infrastructure Coordinating Council resolved to implement the IUDF in a number of strategic infrastructure projects, or SIPs. COGTA and the Department of Rural Development and Land Reform, the Department of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation in the Presidency, and the National Planning Commission are developing a revised framework for intergovernmental planning. The process to reassign the Spatial Land, use, uh, Spatial and Land Use Management Act, or SPLUMA, from the Department of Rural Development and Land Reform to COGTA and DPME is at a very advanced stage. COGTA has worked with National Treasury to ensure the alignment of Metropolitan Built Environment Performance Plans, or BEPS, for the 2016, 17 to 2018, 19 period with the IUDF. Practical site work is being done in Pulukwane and Mhlatuzi local municipality to test the policy objectives of the IUDF. Work on the development of spatial contracts is being done in Ikuruleni, Nelson Mandela Bay, and Msunduzi. MOUs have been signed with the World Bank and Switzerland on funding work related to secondary cities. We encourage the portfolio and the select committee to continue engaging on issues of urbanization and spatial transformation. The community work program continues to make a contribution to government's efforts to eradicate poverty and promote community development. As of March 2017, there were 243,162 people participating in the community work program. This exceeds the annual target of 234,823 participants. We intend creating an additional 32,135 work opportunities in the following year. Our target for 2017-18 is 258,400 CWP participants. We're concerned that the existing MTEF budget projections will make it very difficult to meet, meet the target of one million work opportunities, and we've shared this concern with the portfolio committee. CWP tries to ensure that it is a beginning and not an end by facilitating training and experience for participants. For example, Lungisani Mbadamani from Amahlati worked for the CWP for 2010 to 2016. He attended welding, leadership and hand skills engineering training courses that also motivated him to do security training. He exited the program after being employed as a security guard He's now earning a better salary and saving to further his studies in engineering. The contracts of the existing CWP implementing agents have come to an end. We're working closely with National Treasury to ensure that we implement um, 
that sure that we improve the CWP implementation model to deal with the findings by the Auditor General. We will also strengthen both the project management capacity of the CWP unit as well as institutional arrangements at provincial and district level. We commend Ms. Jane Tupana, the chairperson, and the members of the Municipal Demarcation Board for their excellent work, often under difficult conditions and tight deadlines. The Spatial Transformation Conference hosted by the MDB last year has contributed to legislation amending the Local Government Municipal Demarcation Act, which we aim to introduce in Parliament before the end of this year. The amendments will deal with, amongst others, the difficult issue of the frequency with which municipalities and wards are redemarcated, and try to give effect or recognition to the reality that these demarcations have both electoral as well as developmental consequences. The amendments will also aim to create more accessible channels for citizens to raise objections against decisions by the MDB, as well as mechanisms to strengthen collaboration with the many sector departments that are affected by municipal demarcation. We commend Councillor Parks Tao, the chairperson, and Mr. Stole Mbanga, of this, the CEO of the leadership of the South African Cities Network. Our work continues to be enriched by the very well-researched and thoughtful papers and reports produced by the Cities Network, as well as their continued involvement in the imp implementing the IUDF. In conclusion, my thanks to Minister van Ruyen and Deputy Minister Bapella for their collegiality and comradeship, and to the Acting Ge Director General, uh, Mr. Charles, Dr. Charles Nwaila, the outgoing DG, Mutoto Sigidi, and the officials in the Departments of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs and the Ministry for their dedication and support. Our thanks also goes to the chairpersons and the members of the Portfolio and Select Committees, and last but not least, my appreciation to my partner in cooperative governance, my wife, Kim Robinson. Thank you very much. No, thanks very much. Uh, the, the next speaker is Honorable Maluleka. House Chairperson. Okay. House Chairperson, may I address you in terms of Rule 80 of the Rules of the National Assembly? Thank you very much. It says here that um, you may, you have the right to disable the microphones in the House, but that you must inform the House when you're doing so. I think it also <laughs> applies to your microphone. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> somebody disabled it, not me. <laughs> no, thanks, but uh, proceed, Honourable Member. Honourable Chair, Ministers, Deputy Ministers, Honourable Members, Ladies and Gentlemen, Maroshi Are, all those who are here, I say to you, good afternoon. Honourable Chair, Thank you very much for allowing me to take part in this debate this afternoon. This debate takes place during the Africa month, but we are saddened by the alarming rate of killings of women during this period. We call upon every man to stand up and fight these senseless killings. Let's pray in solidarity to keep this demonic element that is crippling our society. This barbaric act does not resonate well with our African culture. Chair, I'm rising today to deliberate on the budget on vote for COCTA for the financial year 2017-2018. We should note that regardless of the various challenges faced by the country, the ANC, as the ruling party, 
has made remarkable progress towards achieving most of government targets, which is to better the lives of our people. As public representatives, we certainly agree that a lot still needs to be done to ensure Langa here in Western Cape do enjoy the fruits of a democratic country where people are treated equally. Chairperson, the ANC is committed to the strategic objective of building a united, democratic society. And this is not just a mere rhetoric. It involves taking responsibility to transform the historical foundation of which South Africa, African society was built by colonial and apartheid administrations. Contrary to other political parties that believe we must show gratitude to those who colonized us because they brought infrastructure which was only meant for few privileged and the majority of our people left out. We say no to that. It is a disgrace. South Africans should be treated the same. They should all, irrespective of color, line, enjoy a better life. The work of building a nation starts with building a safe and livable neighborhoods. It is in this spirit that COCTA is committed in working hard to ensure that provinces and municipalities roll out infrastructure and services to our communities. Minister, we know that you and your active deputy ministers have been working hard developing integrated urban development framework. The IUDF seeks to do what the NDP wants our democratic state to do to transform apartheid geography, which continues to define our current reality. You have also developed an implementation plan which clearly outlines the practical intervention needed to implement the IUDF with a view to fundamentally transforming the face of our beloved country. We thank you for all this because it shows your commitment to ensure that IUDF does not end up gathering dust in the ministry and departmental shelves. We encourage you to move with speed to practically realize objectives of the IUDF so that all can see the reconfiguration of our country taking place. In the near future, we shall invite you and your department to give us progress on the implementation of this IUDF. Our mission is to improve quality of people's life. It cannot succeed if our government does not have necessary institutional capacity that will enable the government at national, provincial, and local level to implement the developmental agenda. This institutional capacity will never be there without being built and developed. As the NDP puts it, I quote, capable state does not materialize by decree, nor can it be legislated or weaved into existence by declarations. It has to be built brick by brick, institution by institution, and sustained and rejuvenated over time. It requires leadership, sound policies, skilled managers and workers, clear line of accountability, appropriate systems, and consistent and fair application of rules. Chair, during our engagement with the department, we are encouraged to learn that the program of electrification of households in urban, peri-urban, rural areas has increased from 69% in 2001 to 86% in 2014. In the, the impact of this program, particularly on the lives of poor people, has been tremendous. Chair, the ANC-led government has gone a long way in addressing challenges of water, sanitation, and other basic services. This shows that it is only the ANC government that is caring for its citizen. Yes, a lot still needs to be done to ensure that every community gets basic services. And as the committee, we are encouraged by the commitment of this department to deliver these promises, working together with all stakeholders. Chair, 
The committee is concerned about challenges with regard to municipalities, particularly those in rural areas that do not have capacity to generate their own revenue. Them have a weak billing system to collect levies for the provision of water and electricity. They are owed by consumers and they in turn fail to honor their contract with ESCOM and water boards and end up owing millions of rent. But we are encouraged that there have been engagement between the minister, SALGA, National Treasury, ESCOM to assist these muni municipalities to honor their debts. Low rate of revenue collection undermines the ability of municipalities to deliver services. We want municipalities to employ appropriately skilled people who are driven by values and principles of good governance. In this regard, we are hopeful that the minister will devise mechanism to ensure compliance with relevant regulation for recruiting appropriate officials, public servants that have values and principles. We also expect the department to intensify implementation of skills de development programs to ensure that municipalities are correctly managed and led. Chair, we have also asked the minister to, blow, to, to deploy skilled personnel from the department to struggling municipalities to assist them. As we have learned from the AG's report, that he has identified gaps in municipalities on spending of allocated budget. We call upon the department to enhance capacity to those municipalities. There has to be a focus on building strong municipal administrative system by the department. This includes ensuring that administrative positions are filled with competent and committed people whose performance is closely monitored. As the committee, we will monitor that these targets are achieved. Honorable Chair, as the ANC, we support this budget. And we would like to call upon all stakeholders from national, provincial, local level to work together so that every citizen of this beautiful country may enjoy the fruits of democracy. Chair, often two hours have an ambition of becoming bulldogs. However, they forget that they are just harmless little dogs. As I sit down, I just want to tell our people out there that only the ANC-led government can change people's lives for better. Your time Thank has you. expired, Honorable Man. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Honorable Phil Tane. The truth is, the reason why rural municipalities have got no revenue is because the ANC government is failing year in after year to create jobs in those areas. That's the fundamental truth which the ANC consistently avoids. Simple as all that. At present, smaller municipalities are struggling to operate and maintain their services infrastructure in a cost-effective and sustainable manner. As a consequence, there's a rapid deterioration of assets which they found there, followed by catastrophic component failure, regular and prolonged disruptions in service deliv deliveries. In general, municipalities continue to be characterized by the following. Uno, an infrastructure whose lifestyle scenario can be described as run to destruction because of a total lack of routine and preventative maintenance by the ANC-led municipalities. Number two, asset registers that are not up to date, which makes it difficult to trace missing plant and equipment and an inability to compile maintenance plans. As a result, there's a collapse in the general rendering of, of services to the community, procedures that are not or are wrongly implemented in the recruitment of personnel. It has become very common for ANC-led municipalities to recruit their staff through beds at the Holiday Inn. Then you get a post. Simple as all, it's standard practice. Irregularities and deficiencies with procurement procedures resulting in rampant corruption, leakages and overflowing of water and sewage systems, and 
a lack of consultation and cooperation between the municipalities, the business, and the communities. The Back to Basics program, as initially conceived, was, amongst others, intended to decisively address these fundamentals of service delivery. Remember, the moment you think about going back to basics means you have lost the plot. Otherwise, you'll be talking about remedying as you proceed along. So the ANC has declared that it has lost the plot ab initio. Currently, the UDM suggests the following. An infrastructure growth led growth with deliberate investment in socio-economic infrastructure, in particular roads and general community assets. Roads under ANC-led government are not just not possible to drive on, whether they are in the city or anywhere. You go to East London, you go to Umtata, you go to Barawet, you just cannot drive on those roads. A thorough assessment and evaluation of the mandate, the role, effectiveness, and efficiency of the municipal infrastructure development agencies must be in, in, in place. This process must lead to the redesign and support of these agencies so that they are able to play their critical role of helping municipalities to deliver their local economic development programs. In order to achieve this, it is our view that the department must have political and administrative ability so that the frequent leadership change that seems to be fashionable in this ministry and the department comes to an end. The inconsistency between the minister's vision, it is in the book that's been printed by the department, should be consistent with what the CEO of the department, uh, you know, has got. They are diametrically opposed. Here are a few constraining factors to consider if you want to make the real change that you keep dreaming about. The national debt needs to be serviced. It's taking a lot of capital out of the pockets of government to service this big debt. The slim percentage of budget for economic development is a thorn in the flesh, and as long as the ANC-led government continues to budget a very small amount of money for economic development, this country is going down. No, thank you very much. The next speaker is Honorable Hronewald. Achtbare voorzitter, ik heb een baie eenvoudige vraag aan die achtbare minister. Minister, als het zo so goed gaat met plaatselijke regering, zoals wat hij zei, hoe kom het ons dan zo so bij een protest op Want Wat ik kan maar gaan kijken. Feitelijk al die gewelddadige protestoptochten wat in Zuid-Afrika plaatsvindt, begin als een protestoptocht die een zwak dienst leveren. Maar u wil voor Zuid-Afrika kon vertellen dat gaan baie goed. En die verdere gevolg is van die protestoptochten, zoals wat ons bijvoorbeeld nou in die Dutse Bortla municipaliteit gezien het, waar een kolonie geleerd is, wordt dan misbruik ook door criminele elementen om winkels te plunder in die plek in die brand te steken. Zo so, is kilder prinkje wat niet waar is nie. Is poch oor hoeveel werksgeleend hier geskep is. Kom ek vraag vir u. Kom ons gaan kyk na die tekort van ambtenare en die ongekwalificeerde ambtenare wat ons stands vind in plaaslike regering. Ik kan maar gaan kyk na die auditeur generaal se versla en ander versla wat handel oor plaaslike regering. 42% van persone in finansiële departemente en plaatselijke municipaliteiten is onvoldoende gekwalificeerd. 13% municipale bestuurders is die gekwalificeerd voor hulle werk niet, maar hulle is in die werk. Ongeveer een derde van ons municipaliteiten het die een gekwalificeerde hoofingenieur in dienst. Nie. En dan wonder je hoe komen mensen dan in opstand kom als daar niet diensten geleverd worden. Als we eens gaan kijken naar vakante posten, wil ik graag voor de achtbare minister zeggen. In die waterbestuursdirectoraten van plaatselijke regerings is er ongeveer 43.000 vakante posten. En dit gaan over watervoorziening, wat uiterst belangrijk is voor dienstlevering voor ons mensen. Als je gaan kijken naar die verslag van de auditeur-generaal in termen van financiële bestuur. Dan zal je zien dat die auditeur-generaal zegt dat 29, 98% van municipaliteiten 
zijn financiën uiterst kommerwekkend is en dat 25% van alle municipaliteiten in Zuid-Afrika is basis technisch bankrot. Zo so, bestuur eindelijk een technisch bankrot departement in een zekere opzicht. Die uitstaande schulden aan municipaliteiten die dienstgebruikers beloop al meer dan 110 miljard rand. Achtbare minister, hoe kan u verwachten dat de municipaliteit financieel zijn werk moet kan doen als mensen niet betaal voor die diensten? Nie? Maar u zie, die ANC het die cultuur van niet betalen geskip. En u het nou lijkt mij net eenvoudig niet die vermoe om daar die cultuur om te draaien. Want u wil niet naar die kiezers toe gaan en sê, maar betaal voor jouw diensten niet. En al wat u nou doen is, u verplicht nou die betalers van diensten gelden om meer te betalen en te subsidiëren voor die wat niet wil betalen. Dit gaat zo so erg dat sommige municipaliteiten niet eerst salarissen behoorlijk kan betalen. En als ze salarissen aan hulle mensen betalen of hulle werknemers, dan trekken ze niet die belasting af, nie. hulle trekken niet die geld af van hulle pensioenen niet. Of hulle van die werknemer af, maar dan gebruik hulle daar geld en betaal nie oor nie en dan gebruik hulle dit vir infrastructuurontwikkeling. Dit is die werkelijke prentjie van plaaslijke regering en nie die Ethiopia waar die achtbare minister skets nie. Ek dank. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Honorable Madisha. Uh, thank you. Uh, before I get uh, to the substance of my contribution to this debate. I, along with the uh, uh, COPE express our condolences to the family of the late Matom Lamtre, who died in a, tra I mean, in a tragic yet unexplained circumstances. Matomula Urobala Rabotse. Now, Chairperson, permit me to first travel to the Northwest, a province because that province is an example. It actually permeates. What happens there permeates the entire country. South Africans were shocked at the recent unrest in Colini, all of which was pinned into earlier against heightened racial tension. And uh, a lot has now begun to rise in the ANC itself. That is why you see even the ministers and deputy ministers uh, do not, are not just white persons, but is based on tribalism. Now, Colini forms part of the ANC-led Ditsovota local municipality. The municipality has a history of poor municipal governance, service delivery protest, and calls for the removal of the ANC mayor. Now, the same thing permeates very many other municipalities around the country. The latest annual report of the municipality, like others as well, led by ANC, acknowledges that the municipality faces governance, administrative, uh, finance, and service delivery challenges, has been subjected to two uh, interventions, including being placed under administration with little improvement. Go to Vuan, for example, uh, lacks little you see you proceed on remember you see order, if you if you go on members. like that you must know that is a nonsense and some of us uh, will have to stop and deal with that that is utter nonsense and uh, we can't allow that kind of thing. Order, honorable members, order. That's nonsense. Honorable members, 
address the chair, not the, not the, not the members. Through you, chair. That is nonsense. <laughs> that municipality that I've referred to lacks senior competent staff. That its, its infrastructure is aging and is not maintained like a whole lot of other municipalities that it has received a series of financial disclaimers. That is what, you know, ANC is going through all over the country, that the provision of water, sewage, and electricity services is a problematic uh, uh, issue, especially to the poorer and uh, rural uh, communities. The situation that I have set out about of a fragile and uh, failing municipality are not my views, but come straight from the municipality's own annual uh, report. Now, you've got to couple this, Chairperson and Honorable Members. Thank you very much, Honorable Matisha. Your time has expired. Uh, I must say, as I go down. Don't that, say uh, anything, because your ANC time has expired. This is a nonsense <laughs> kind of party. Uh, all the honorable members, the next speaker is Honorable Barra. It is, is, it is his maiden speech. So we appeal that you respect that. It's his maiden speech. Thank you. Let's Thank respect that. Thank you, Chair. Um, Chairperson, firstly, the surname is Baha, not Bar. Um, Chairperson, the South African Local Government Association has a mandate to transform capacity and drive local government to improve service delivery. However, we've noted that more than 32% of its budget goes towards salaries. Of the 619.2 million, 277 million goes to administration with a salary of 4.4 million to its CEO, Golila George. That's more than double the salary, salary of the president or a highest paid municipality manager. Tell us, Minister, how such bloated salaries help improve the capacity of the 257 municipalities Salga represents, and how does this improve service delivery? The CRL Commission is the least funded of all the Chapter 9 institutions. It has a huge task of investigating initiation deaths, exploitation of our people by bogus churches, um, it has to deal with sexual abuse of young women by self-proclaimed pastors, stereotypes um, around albinism, commercialization of churches, and protection of grave sites, to mention but a few. Then, Minister, how do you expect this commission to do its work with a mere budget of less than 40 million rands? Clearly, lives of South Africans are not important to this government. What happened to the famous slogan? Infrastructure Support Agency, MISA, is focused on improving municipal infrastructure for accelerated service delivery. That is supposedly in keeping with back to basis strategy. MISA has poor control of the supply chain, weak performance management, and human capacity deficiencies. Surprisingly, its budget increased from 349.9 to 381.5 million rands in 2017-18. Without an effective supply chain unit, MISA has been unable to deal with irregular expenditure. Is this another way of extending the government has demonstrated too many times that it is incapable of properly handling taxpayers' money? It is incomprehensible that the budget allocation for municipal demarcation board has been dropped from 59 to 50.5 million. The task of this board remains crucial in the determination of boundaries and viability of municipalities. This is continuous work and not only just before elections. Extremely concerning, though, is the fact that no municipal assessments have been conducted in the last three years. Lastly, the National Disaster Management Center had an underspending of 56.3% in 2015-16 financial year. How is that possible when the whole country was ravaged with drought? What contingency plans are in place to address the water scarcity in Cape Town? Why has the minister not declared a national disaster as the, declare, as the DA has advocated since 2014? Cogta is the heart 
of service delivery and therefore requires effective, efficient and visionary leadership. The current minister is unable to provide that. South Africa deserves better. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> no, thank you very much, Honorable Pacha. I'm sorry for pronouncing it wrongly. Uh, you know, you know, I am a Swazi. In Swazi, Uara is Ra. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry for that. Uh, the next speaker uh, is the Deputy Minister, uh, Honorable Babel. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Members of Parliament, the Minister has already acknowledged all honored guests. However, I must acknowledge the presence of tra traditional leaders and royalty sitting in the gallery. Fellow South Africans, let me start with a quote by O.R. Tambo when he sent a message of congratulations to Contra Lesa on its establishment in 1987. And the quote goes as, traditional leaders in South Africa should unite to fight for the eradication of the Bantu stand system. To school the traditional leaders about the aims of the South African liberation struggle and their role in it, to win back the land of our forefathers and share it among those who work it in order to banish famine and land hunger, and fight for a unitary, non-racial, and a democratic South Africa." Close quote. The late president of the African National Congress, Oliver Reginald Tambo, if he was alive, he would be celebrating 100 years on the 27th of October, 2017. Does the ANC-led government, together with his family, declare 2017 the year of the O.R. Tambo centenary to honor this international icon of our liberation struggle and a revolutionary. We present the 2017-2018 budget and we are pleased to report that the Portfolio Committee has conducted successful public hearings on the tradition, traditional and Khoisan leadership bill for the recognition of the Khoisan communities, the last of the African indigenous group to be officially recognized and this will be a major triumph. The legislation will also be bolstering the role of traditional leaders and their institutions. Currently, there's only one more public hearing to be conducted in the Western Cape before presenting the report to Parliament. I'm choosing to begin with this important area to demonstrate our commitment to the building of the nation that is united through its diversity and that when we report back to the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues in 2018 next year, South Africa will have passed through the legislation that seeks to recognize all groups, the Khoisan, Amazulu, Amakosa, Amandevele, Tsongas, Bavenda, Basutu, Batswana, Bapedi, Amaswati, as they were the most oppressed since conquered by the colonists during, and during apartheid. As the strategy and tactics of the ANC pronounced, the liberation of the blacks in general, which is Indians, Kalats, and Africans, and Africans in particular, these are the indigenous national groups that suffered the most. We are still, and st uh, we, we, we are still suffering, and we still have to restore their dignity in a new democratic South Africa. The struggle continues for blacks in general, and Africans in particular. That legislation proposals will recognize the Khoisan people and give a complete recognition and existence of all the ten indigenous national groups that are part of the new nation called South Africa, embodying also the settled communities from Europe and Asia into one common nationhood called South Africa. We are very clear that there should be no communities or people who are deliberately excluded from the benefits of their country. This process is high on government agenda. As a member state, South Africa participated and made a meaningful contributions at the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues at the 16th session through the statements that were presented. We are also pleased that the statement by the National Khoisan Council as well was well received and is included in the report with recommendations. We wish to thank Mr. Cecil Flo for having sacrificed his teaching career and a good pension to fight this good cause, good cause for the recognition of the Khoisan communities in South Africa. The forum nominated South Africa to lead the African region. 
out of the eight regions of the world. This is a recognition for our continued work and progress in realizing the rights of indigenous people since the adoption of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of the Indigenous People 10 years ago. The cause of the triple challenges of poverty, unemployment, and inequality is a direct result of land dispossession, which constitutes the means of production. Hence, we need fundamental change in the ownership of our land, the systems, the structure, and the management of our land in favor of the poor and the majority who are Africans. It is the land that will bring back the dignity of black people in this country, and that will help us achieve reconciliation. We should adopt programs to seriously address the challenges of poverty, underdevelopment, marginalization, social exclusion, economic disparities, instability, and insecurity. Land is the primary asset for development and economic growth for traditional leaders and their communities. And we're working with the Department of Rural Development Land Reform and other key departments to ensure that the land question is addressed through appropriative legislative processes. We are aware that this is not going to be an overnight process. Together, we need to confront challenges of exclusion on the economic emancipation or the radical economic transformation. The majority of people, mainly amongst the Africans' indigenous communities, continues to face poverty of, uh, at high level and inequality. Therefore, the land is a fundamental matter for the majority of the people and is firmly on the agenda for transformation. As we debate this budget vote, COCTA, we must take note of the debate that took place in the National House of Traditional Leaders regarding the 10 kinships and the 829 traditional leaders and the Khoisan leaders which, who raised the issues during that particular debate. One, they, assess, they are calling for the assessment of the effectiveness of the traditional council to determine whether they operate at the level they were expected when established to perform and to enhance participatory democracy. Two, creation of a synergy between traditional councils and various government departments, and in particular, municipalities. Three, calling on government to speak to recognize its leadership of the question and restore their dignity. The agricultural parks must empower uh, rural communities. Government should provide sufficient support to develop the agricultural sector in rural areas, build capacity and knowledge to fight poverty and build in local economic development. Lastly, to address the lack of beneficiation and failure to implement the social labor plans and the granting of mining rights, which is not coordinated uh, and, and most often sidelines traditional leaders and communities are not principal beneficiaries of mining activities in their own respective areas. The priorities of the institution is very important to guide the department in supporting traditional leaders to focus on their mandates and functions and their roles. Uh, Honorable Tebekulu Nkosiyami, I wish you could have mentioned those Abanga Sapotamakos. Some of them are saying, Konala. Azanga Basho Luto, Logo, Kalu Koluma, and Amakos, good Batini, Nabo. And I wish you good time, Tang and his Konala, the two Lil, the DA and the EFF, and Bazwanga Luto, good Batini, Nam. And then, therefore, EFF just only said, uh, don't use them as pawns. That was all. I don't know what offer solutions are you offering as the EFF, except just to say, don't use them as, as pawns. The DA silent. I know that they matipe barufile wa na rota vole la kama hosi because as always, babi amu chomo sora kubwe ya na guanga kama hosi. Oga suti wa na ba guaka wa na mahosi au. I hope we rota vole la sinya ni na or DA eringa kama hosi na. The Commission of, for the Protection and Promotion of the Rights of Cultural, Religious, and Linguistic Communities has led on key public campaigns and hearings. We support the Commission in rooting out the commercialization of religion. A final report will be presented to Parliament later this year. The investigation studied the abuses of the vulnerable people and practices which are not benefiting to the dignity of religion. Hoping, therefore, that the religions as an institution uh, are supposed to play a development role in taking the challenges of moral regeneration and social cohesion and nation building in our communities. One of the pre program is to restore the dignity of traditional leaders and speed up on all outstanding backlogs, and the department is therefore providing the strategic role and leadership. As Minister has said earlier, 
While legislation is being drafted, we'll be launching the 2016 initiation season campaign under the slogan, we love our tradition, we value our life of our youth in pursuit of the zero test. We are working and strengthening human and financial capacity within the department to start an awareness and education campaign to give and restore dignity to these culture traditions and custom and to stamp out illegal activities associated with the initiation. We are already working with the provinces and municipality to put up systems and programs and we'll be announcing, uh, particularly in the urban areas, what needs to be done. We are more than ready for the 2017 working with Health Department, National Prosecuting Authority, SAPS, and Civil Society. Our focus is going to be in Gauteng, Eastern Cape, Mpumalanga, and Limpopo, which are simmering with variety of challenges. 23,000 young ch uh, children have gone into the initiation already. They are there. Only five died out of the 23,000. And, and, and yes, death is too much uh, for any death, but at least 23,000 of them will be coming back safe in the uh, end of June. And I think we need to applaud Mpomalanga for the very good work uh, in, in trying to prevent death. In conclusion, we want to also announce the Indaba that the minister had also announced that will be taking place on the 28th of May to the 2nd of June. Under the slogan, Together Moving South Africa Forward, United in Our Diversity for a Prosperity Inclusive Future. It is a traditional leadership in Daba amongst others to look at the issue of the land ownership and tenure rights, the radical socioeconomic development in, through investment and partnership, institutional support, nation building, social cohesion, and ensuring universal rights as enshrined in the Bill of Rights to be enjoyed especially by women and children in the rural area. To also discuss the future, uh, including transformation agenda of the model of traditional leadership system, whether in the evolving, the modernizing, and developing society it fits or we need to look at how it can be settled as, as part of the settlements that have taken all over the world. And like in Britain, like in, 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 in Denmark, and like in, in, in Netherlands, and in, in some parts of Africa. And we hope therefore that everyone will be participating in that. And the Indaba will conclude the launch of the Royal Highness Awards, and hoping therefore that you'll exceed the request by traditional leaders. They are asking the EFF, the DA, the ANC, and the IFP to join so that you could then come and present your own vision about the future of the traditional leadership in South Africa. I thank you. No, thank you very much. Uh, Mbonye Slalo, eh, Honorable Kalisa, you must attend portfolio committee meetings so that you are accurate with facts and then you don't mislead the public. Nyingu mavilagazi uma mpepete wagwa mtembu ngibi ngelela iza kamuza seningizim Afrika ganye na makosi enda mungu. On the point of order. Ezi fundazwe ni zongana za gule nga badi. Honorable member, what is the point of order? What is the point of order? The point of order. What is the point of order? The point of order. The member of the in the podium is misleading the public. In what way? He says I'm misleading the public. No, that's a point for a debate. It's not a point of order. It's a point for a debate. Proceed, honorable member. Mbeleleza kama uzaseni ngi zimafrika kanya na makosi nezindu na ezfunda zwenzonga na zaglenga badi kanya na bobonga bako na gulenzi yosakom teto minister the deputy ministers um, and na ma lunga ekomiti enyanga ne pezulu untaba e eh, Africa month gubuye gube nyanga je nyanga e eh, sis kai sango buzwe kanya na masigo e eh, tu onyanga nwe kwa ela lola inkulego ya sisiwe sasa ningi zima Africa kanya na Africa yonka na u Oliver Tambo nami mani zogali se ilaga lami ngogu ngalo bubulova no bulwa ne obenzega yo e sisiwe ni na sempaga tinua giti ogu tibu bulwa we abantu ba lesfaza nenga lendela ababula wana ababula wanga yo si lete na mazu endu tuze kumindeni elashegelewe. Slalo, abaholi benda bugo, babalege kakulu gule, kululego nombuso wentando eningi. 
abanye bala baba holy benda bugo basi legele laga kulu sizo sase ningizim afrika ugu basi kulu lege egu tunde zelwe ni nugu tulazwa gomundo nzundu beba mbise nene ntangano ebu sayo na mula ntangano ga african national Cong congress si kulu legi le yebo ngegezo politiki koto angogezo mnoto asiga ga kulu legi inga aboguna le lkwelo liga african national le radical economic transformation aba holy benda bugo basa Lisa Funega Ikaza e, Uguba Bali Bambega Kulu Nagu Lumza Balazo Esugu Wale Nkululego Yawezim Noto. Ulumen wendezelo no bandulula agazange wabasho nipa aba holy benda bugo. Kota awenza nje uguba atale utregego esizwe in sagiti no guti atelele laba holy benda bugo. The role and the function of traditional leaders in our democracy and local government is not difficult to resolve in South Africa eh, than in any other. African state, given the historical background of the formation of the African National Congress in 1912. The ANC was formed in 1912 by chiefs. Amongst others, the ANC demonstrated its trust in the traditional authorities by electing Chief Albert Lutul as its president in 1953. The ANC came to power in 1994 when it won the first democratic elections. The ANC demonstrated its willingness to accommodate traditional authorities at its 50th Ne elective national conference that was held in 1997 in Mafikeng, the ANC noted that the traditional and tribal authorities were to do the following, to administer the communal land, to demarcate and allocate plots for re residential and sustenance agricultural use, to perform judicial functions through tribal courts by resolving certain categories of disputes, to assist members of the community in dealing with the state, to promote the development of their area by lobbying government departments, to act as custodians of customs and culture, to serve as symbols and of authority, and to advise government on matters of concern through the House and the Council of Traditional Leaders. The 1997 conference also resolved to promote cooperation between it also resolved to push government to centralize the payment of traditional leaders, to develop a program of action to educate traditional leaders and inform them of their rights, duties and responsibilities, and to request government to establish a commission that would investigate and make recommendations on restoring traditional leadership to hereditary leaders. These resolutions point to that fact that traditional leaders must play a meaningful role in development projects and plans. The ANC continued to seek a sustainable solution to this challenge of traditional leadership in its 2004 election manifesto entitled A People's Contract uh, to Create Work and Fight Poverty. It committed itself to integrating the institution of traditional leadership to democratic governance and development. In 2003, January 8 statement, the National Executive Council, NEC of African National Congress, committed itself to respect and recognize the institution of traditional leadership for its role in the advancement of the interests of the people in the democratic setting. It directly binds its structure to work with them in improving the lives of the rural masses. Traditional leaders had played a role of promoting developmental issues in the areas that they controlled, whilst being a political, democratic, local structures were implemented. As traditional leaders are custodians of traditional values and customs, but do have a significant role to play in economic and social development as a partner catalyst and a facilitator, traditional authorities have a role to assist local municipalities in meeting their objectives. As enshrined in the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa, this is confirmed by the Governance Framework Act of 2003. In its local government, back to basic strategy, the Department of Traditional Affairs has developed a framework for the participation of traditional leaders in municipal councils to harmonize relations between traditional structures and municipalities. The roles of traditional leaders in municipalities affairs include their role to facilitate the participation of traditional communities in any municipal activities that allow for public participation in keeping with the back to 
basics approach, municipal and traditional structures should establish strong collaborative working relations to create decent living conditions and improve delivery of services to rural traditional communities. The ANC continued to seek a sustainable solution to this challenge of traditional leadership in the 2004 election manifesto entitled A People's Contract to Create a, a, a Work and Fight Poverty. It committed itself to integrate the institutions of traditional leadership into democratic governance and development. In its 2016 local government manifesto, the ANC, in collaboration with the traditional this hard-fought democracy has reiterated its commitment by working with traditional leaders uh, to, to traditional leaders to ensure that communal land under the trusteeship of traditional leaders is accessible and available to development and economic growth. The culture ministry embarked on the back-to-back -back basics approach from 2014-2015. The Back to Basics approach is centered on five pillars which will be utilized to monitor performance of municipalities to ensure that they perform basic responsibilities. The functionality of traditional councils is one of the mechanisms that can enhance success of the Back to Basics approach since they are operate in the same space as municipalities for improved service deliveries. On the regulation of the cultural initiation practice, it will be important to applaud the department with its commitment in dealing and addressing the challenges within, with, within this cultural practice. We therefore request the department to move with speed in regulating such. In concluding, Chairperson, the end of apartheid provided for the restoration of the dignity to all South Africans. The progressive constitution is a, is a testament to that history. It is a national compact that defines South Africa's common values and identifies our rights and responsibilities as people living together. I would like to condemn all ill happenings within the church fraternity and also to encourage the church body to take a stand uh, of, uh, against such actions. The church must unite and have a position in working with the government in coming up with the legislation that will regulate them. The ANC supports the budget. I thank you. <clears throat> thank you, honorable member. Uh, chairperson, location for the current year in respect of the management of traditional affairs increases from 9.1 to 11.3 million. In terms of section one of the Municipal Structures Act, 117 of 1998, traditional leaders must be permitted to participate in municipal councils. We however question the effect effectiveness of this as these traditional leaders have been silent in, in municipal councils, in effect, promoting local government. This is because the role and functions of traditional leaders, especially in a constitutional democracy, have not yet been clearly defined. Traditional councils, in many instances, have not yet been constituted as well as kinship and queenship councils, as required by the traditional leadership and governance framework for one of 2003. The forthcoming amendments to the act seeks to legitimize an already illegitimate situation, as this will further muddy the, the waters in this res respect. Consequently, there is an uncertainty over the, the legal status of the current traditional councils. Reducing debts and initia initia uh, 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 at initiation schools is another glaring problem which the department has not yet adequately addressed. According to the Commission for the Promotion and Protection of the Rights of Cultural, Religious, and Linguistic Communities, about 251 male initiates died between the, between the years 2014 and 16 financial years. Chairperson, one life is too many. This is thus an, there, is, there is thus an urgent need to regulate the cultural initiation practices so as to reduce the number of fatalities and injuries emanating from it. 
We therefore request that the Department of Traditional Affairs work closely with the Commission to implement better control practices and stamp out the malpractice that is resulting in the death of our young ones. Another challenge that the department must address is the costing of the traditional and question leadership bill, which will be inclusive of the question leadership and their structures. Given the fact that the question leaders have not yet been, uh, 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 been audited, the financial implications are in this respect unknown. Therefore, we request that a comprehensive financial impact assessment be urgently initiated as part of the legis uh, legislative process. I thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much. The Honorable Masondo. Yes. Now, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Minister of Cogda, Mr. Des Van Royen, Honorable Deputy Ministers of Cogta and Risnell and Obed Bapela, Honorable Members, Traditional Leaders, Fellow Citizens. Chairperson, this mini plenary has convened to examine the budget. The budget is not merely about the numbers. This is a platform to consider and discuss questions of policy development and the most difficult and complex matter of implementation, what others refer to as the art of doing. Now, listening to the various political parties, one would think that uh, all is doom and gloom. And the language they use indeed is very negative. Speak of disarray, financial instability, ANC failing, etc., etc. But I wish to note that uh, the member of the DA, Honorable Milham, is driven by one and one reason only. His deep hatred for the ANC, and I'm talking real about deep in ingrained hatred. Achievement number one. Chairperson, let us remind ourselves that as of the 1st of January 2017, we had a total of 257 municipalities. Eight of these are metropolitan. 44 are districts. And 205 are local municipalities. The demarcation process will reduce even these even further as we pursue our quest for sustainable and consolidated viable wall-to-wall -wall municipalities. This is indeed progress, and no rational, rational person can deny it. Achievement number two. After 27 April 1994, political breakthrough, 23 years later, South Africa is indeed a different country. Among others, we have uh, today a single unified <laughs> Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs. Its core mandate and focus being to support the provincial and local spheres of government, to facilitate and promote cooperative governance, to continue to assist the institution of traditional leadership, to transform itself into a, a, a strategic partner of government in the development of communities. This is in itself progress. See Achievement number three. One of, one of the unique ANC interventions has been, amongst others, the introduction of the Integrated Development Plan and the Local Economic develop, de Development uh, uh, LEDs. The IDPs on one hand, annual and statutory, and statutory, these are five-year strategic development plans 
These plans are obligatory. They are, they are prepared in consultation communities and various local, local stakeholders. The aim and goal in any specific municipal, municipal area is to ensure development in a sustainable manner. The local economic development plan, on the other hand, speaks to the intended maximization of economic potential of each municipal locality, especially the need to ensure resilience and economic enhancement in the face of the current and difficult macroeconomic situation or circumstance. Many would agree that the word lo local speaks to the fact that the political jurisdiction at, at the local level is often the most appropriate place for econ economic intervention, as it carries al alongside it the accountability and legitimacy of a democratically elected body. The question may be posed, who pioneered this concept and idea in South Africa? The answer is obvious, the ANC. So amongst, amongst others, LED programs have provided support for the development and, and reviewing of national policy strategy and, and, and guidelines on LEDs, have developed fa fa to facilitate, coordinate, and monitor donor programs, have helped to manage the LED fund. This is in, indeed is work in progress. We learn as we do. Achievement number four. Further, the Municipal Finance Management Act and related legislation to protect and secure sound and sustainable management of the fiscal and financial affairs of both municipalities and municipal entities. This has been done through the establishment and deepening of norms and sound standards. Honorable Chaps, passing over time, this has ensured transparency, accountability, and appropriate lines of responsibility, and short management of revenue, expenditures, assets, and liabilities, and short budgetary and financial planning of processes, and short prudent borrowing, and in short, in short supply chain management, as well as sound management of other financial matters. Chairperson, let us know that in terms of MFMA, the National tre tre Treasury may, in respect of, of any municipality or municipal entity, monitor their budgets and the implementation of their budgets, investigate any system of financial management and internal control and, and, and recommend improvements, take appropriate steps in, in a municipality or municipal entity that commits a breach, and let us note as well that it is worth observing that the ANC has pioneered this important work. Achievement number five, efforts on fighting corruption. Chairperson, on corruption, there is no such thing as a perfect political party. At a distance, the DA looks like a large green grass but as you get closer, the color green becomes faded. It becomes a faded blue. The Nelson, Man the Nelson Mandela Bay Mayor Atoll Trollip on Wednesday this week removed Mr. M. Bobani from the mayoral committee. Uh, this gentleman is the MMC for for health. Mr. Bobani, as we all know, is a UDM councillor. The business day, today's business day, Thursday, the 18th of May 2017, captures this in the following manner. Point of order, share. Quote. Order, Honorable, Honorable Masondo, just take your seat. Is that you a must not order? come and mislead this house. That is just Thank not you. true. The process is still taking place. Just take, take your seat. That's not a point of order. Proceed, Masondo. The business day captures this in, in, the, in, the, in the following words. Quote, Florida recalled Boban on Tuesday after months of escalating tension between the two men in which they differ on, on, on almost everything. Close quote. In this conflict, Bobane has accused the DA administration of corruption. 
The DA, on the other hand, is alleged that Bobani is corrupt. We know, however, that the people out there want to know what is the truth. Instead of fighting each other, our view is that the preoccupation should be about service delivery and the improvement in the lives of, of people in general in, in, in this and other sense. municipalities. We call on the DA to answer these serious allegations. Uh, Honorable Masondo, just take your seat. Take your seat for a, for a bit. In terms of is previous the, rulings the, of this house, a matter which is sub to the case, not supposed to be a matter of debate. Well, we, know, we have not been informed that it is in front of the courts. Proceed, Honorable Masondo. We call on the, on the DA to answer these serious allegations. And may we warn them, as we have always done, that those who stay in glass houses should not throw stones. The, na the notion of a, of a perfect political party is an illusion. The DA should know better. Chairperson, corruption is everyone's business. It affects me, it affects you, and it affects society. Allow me, Chairperson, to quote the, 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 the Vietnamese revolutionary, Ho Chi Minh, who speaks of internal invaders and external invaders. And he says, the latter can never, be defeat, can never defeat us if they, if they do not collaborate with and make use of the internal enemies who have become degenerate, but still occupy important parts of the Vietnamese state apparatus. This is implicated, is complicated, sorry, and, and tough struggle, close quote. He, con he continues to say, quote, the fight against the enemy with arms on the front is easy. But the struggle against the internal enemy in ourselves, in our minds, in our organizations is difficult and brings about greater anguish and therefore needs to be carried out with determination, close quote. Thank you. The time has expired. Uh, the ANC support uh, this budget. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, honorable members, you have raised issues in your debate. Let's allow the minister to respond. Thank you, House Chair, once more. Let me also thank colleagues, uh, honorable members, for the submission that I've made. I think most of them are very, very helpful to ensure that we intensify our work of improving service delivery at the municipal level. But of course, there are a few that need to be clarified and be placed in the appropriate context. Uh, House Chair, our own uh, assessment report, the back to basic report, uh, which was released in June last year, confirms that uh, the national household population has increased by 17.1%. And this high level of growth is accompanied by high levels of service expectations, which results in communities becoming impatient with the rate of delivery. Now, the very same report confirms that uh, municipalities are striving to improve service delivery. And the very same report uh, confirms that there is progress that has been registered as a result of our Back to Basic program. Now, this is further, uh, uh, of course, there is further concurrence from the AG's report on, on performance of municipalities on financial management. And this is further reiterated by States SA report on the level of service delivery that has been extended to our people. Now, I don't understand because I think 
Honorable uh, uh, Milam, there is a lot, there was a lot of mayhem uh, and distortion in your submission because you lied. You are literally lying. On a point of order, House Chair. Um, Honorable Minister, just take your seat. House Chairperson, the Minister just accused the member of lying. He can't say he's lying. Um, Um, honorable Minister, hon Honorable Minister, have you said that it's lying? Yes, he distorted the facts. It's, if, you say, if you said it's lying, it's unparliamentary, can you withdraw that? I withdraw. He distorted Thank the facts. Thank you. Fact. Proceed. Equally, equally important, uh, House Chairperson. The, the phrasing of uh, current appointments of municipal officials as a cadre deployment, I think is banal and outdated. The reality of the matter is that as we are speaking, as COCTA working together with National Treasure, and we, Honorable Milam knows that very well, we have introduced minimum competency requirements. And as a result, even it can be may mayhem, it's fine. Uh, as a result, <laughs> the reality of the matter is that we are extending this, we are extending this also to lower uh, levels in municipalities because we are committed to ensure that municipalities are properly capacitated, but also they are properly staffed with competent uh, staff of this process and is yielding. Equally important is uh, the fact that the withdrawals of uh, service delivery uh, 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 powers from category B municipalities or your local municipalities. It's not a thumb sack exercise. It's not correct that you come here, more especially as someone who's serving at the National Assembly, and, and uh, obviously create an impression that you can just wake up, uh, maybe MEC Mashadile can just wake up and decide to take powers from uh, a, a category B municipality without following the provision of the law. I, 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 I think that's reflect, that's reflect how, I mean, ignorant are you about the own legislations that we develop at this house? I think you are distorting the provisions of the law. Now, you see, the honorable member of uh, EFF, uh, well, I will pardon you because of uh, is all about. The reality of the matter here is that provincial boundary issues are a constitutional uh, uh, provided for. They are a constitutional aspect or a provision. You don't just tamper with those matters without taking them through parliament. So there's nothing like ANC will then decide, I mean, to, to conclude on its own about the issue of Matatiel. The issue of Matatiel and other outstanding issues in as far as provincial boundaries are concerned will come back to us, will come back to this house. So please take time and go through the provision of the legislation around this uh, particular uh, matter. So as you are properly empowered next time when you engage. Now, in Kosi, Ule Kuzana, U Baba Kubisa. Baba Kubisa, thanks very much for, for you, the acknowledgement of the role of traditional leaders in municipal councils. And I think that the coming in Daba, but also the mooted uh, legislative changes, will accord us an opportunity to make sure that this issue is clarified. Because in other municipalities, it's working, but in other municipalities, we are still picking up problems. And definitely, we will be working on that. And I, I must concur, Chair, with a submission that suggests that training to CWP beneficiaries must be accredited. Gone are the days where we have a, a training providers coming to train CD, CWP beneficiaries uh, while their training is not accredited. So truly speaking, that issue is going to enjoy our attention and that issue is going to be addressed. CWP uh, programs are important to make sure that our less fortunate people are employable. They can uh, uh, access the labor market. So they can access the labor market if they are tra the training that is provided to them is not accredited. Thank we you. will be working on that, and we will make sure that we are going to outlaw any provi an, uh, provision of training that is not accredited Thank to you. CWP. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, 
Honorable members, let us thank the minister and the deputy ministers for leading the debate. Let's thank members for participating in this debate. Let's thank the guests in the gallery as well as royalty present. That concludes the debate and the business of this mini plenary session. The mini plenary will now rise. <laughs>